that note. So welcome everyone to the Research Code Review Community Workshop. Um, for the next minute or so, um, I will give you, I just came really cautious. Can everyone see my screen? And is the Zoom panel showing up over top of it? Okay, that's good, all right. Um, so for the next minute or so, uh, I will give you an idea of the sort of how it started in terms of the code review community, um, which will, it will then hand over to Tivo, who will cover how it's going, um, and he'll present the outputs of the community to date, and we'll then split into some breakout rooms to really harvest your invaluable feedback. Right, so um, if we take ourselves back to 2020, which seems a lifetime ago, uh, following a tremendous response um, to a tweet, uh, the Research Code Review community was formed in early 2021, uh, where you can see on the right-hand side, we used a bottom-up community approach to really define our remit and set uh, forward our priorities. Um, so the community was really built on and inspired by recent initiatives in code review, which you've already heard about during this conference, including, for instance, Code Check, as well as the Oxford Code Review Network. Um, and it was in an effort to really bring together the many strands of code review uh, and exchange knowledge and provide uh, confidence to all stakeholders um, when dealing with scientific research software. So the Research Code Review community is a collaboration um, between research software engineers, funders, society representatives, academic publishers, and researchers. Uh, and in short, um, our aim was really to build consensus and awareness around good practices in code review, um, whilst also raising awareness about the importance of functional and reusable code in scientific research. Um, we expect that our deliverables will advise sort of a range of people, including research software engineers, researchers themselves, research funders and institutions, publishers, organization, and open science initiatives on good practices around code review. And I think this is especially important as software sort of becomes more deeply embedded across a wide range of disciplines. And so whilst initially, as you'll see here, we tried to boil the ocean, if you will, uh, our USP is now focused on code review during research, particularly um, for what we call the academic research lone, lone coders or lone wolves, um, who are not necessarily research engineers and don't necessarily have anyone else uh, within their lab community that is also coding. And so before I hand over to Tivo, I thought we'd just take the temperature of the room, if you will. Um, so this Menti poll is also linked in the notes. I'm just gonna pop it up on my screen. So, if everyone has a chance to follow the link. Um, first question is, have you ever participated in code review during research or during development, if you will? Oh, some votes coming in. All right, so no one is unsure. That's good news, at least. And um, we'll move into the next question, which um, is looking on a scale of whether you strongly agree or disagree. Um, your experience with code view, review during research has been positive for those of you that said yes. And secondly, code review during research, you believe to be a valuable experience for both coder and reviewer. Great stuff. So it seems we might be preaching to the choir today. Oh, oh, some movement. All right. And with that, I will hand over to Tibo, sorry, to take you through the rest of the session. Sorry, I was getting confused with Zoom. As soon as you share, just, everything is at the top and I always get confused. Can you hear me okay and see my screen? Yeah, absolutely clear. Okay, great. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Holly. So um, yesterday morning, we had a presentation about um, code check and, and code check is really code review, but at the time of publications. 
um, which means that the, the people who run the, the code checkers, they mainly check that they can run the code, but they don't really look at, at the code itself. And um, that's very important for you know, reproducibility and, and generally checking the, the state of a, of a code base. But imagine that if, if you are a code checker and you, know, you go the extra mile and you actually take a look at the code itself, um, what happens if the, you realize that the code is, is very difficult to read or is, is you know, plain and, and maintainable? It's one thing to be able to run a code. It's obviously the, one of the most important things, but um, if you get some numbers and you're not really able to, to know how these numbers were generated because you can't really understand the code, that's another problem. And you can be sure that um, it's going to be very difficult for anyone to actually reuse part of the code or, or extend, extend the code. So, um, and, and now it's, it's too late. You, know? you can't really go back to the author of the code and say, well, I'm not going to have this stamp of approval because I want you to rewrite the whole of your code. This is just not going to happen. It's simply too late. The time of publication is it's too late. So maybe there's, a, there's room for a different kind of code review, a code review during research. And it's something that would be quite different from the traditional academic um, peer review model. And it's, it's a code review that would be informal. Um, it's a code review that would be low stakes. And it's something that you would do quite frequently. So for instance, it's, it's a code review that you would do with your colleagues, um, maybe like twice or once a week. Um, and so this is, this is somewhere where you're really going to focus on the code itself, right? It's not the place where you would look at the science in details, but the, the focus is really code quality. And perhaps you, you won't even care that you code um, run or not, maybe it's code that you started yesterday and then it's not even compiling, um, but that's not really what you want to look at. You really want to look at, at, the, at the code quality. And so the idea is that if you do this, um, maybe with your colleagues throughout your research, then when you, when you arrive at the time of publication, your code itself um, is in a better place. It's, it's, it's a little bit healthier, but code quality is one thing. But if you start doing code review during research, it, it also benefits you as the, the researchers. It benefits the researchers who take part in the code review. Because as you sit down with your colleagues and you review their code, they review your code, you get to learn from them and they get to learn from you. And so this is exactly how, this is a great way to actually disseminate good practices within a workplace, whether it's, it's in your own research team, you know, your four colleagues, or the department of maybe at the level of your own institution. And it's, it's also something that's gonna build some sort of uh, like a, a team spirit, right? You're gonna to get to know what your colleagues are working on and the, the knowledge of the, of, the, of the code that maybe you are developing together, but also even if you're all working on your own little, your own scripts or your own pipelines, then um, even though it's, you're gonna to get to know what they're working on and, and, and learn from their, from their tricks and then you can share your tricks with them, et cetera, et cetera. So code review is really like three main benefits. The first one is it benefits the code itself and then you get to have a knowledge transfer and also it's, it's like really builds another level of collaboration. And this is not something that's really new, right? Um, code review as a frequent discussion of our piece of code is something that is quite common practice in the software industry and open source communities is if you ever try to contribute to open source software, maybe on GitHub or GitLab, it's you probably went through a code review. You didn't sit with the person with the reviewer, um, but it was that you can also do it through um, platforms like GitHub or GitLab. But although it's common practice, it's, you know, maybe I mean, it's, it's quite difficult to find in academia. Some people do it, but it's not the majority. It's definitely a rare thing to, um, to find in, in, a, in, a, in a research context, in academia, but also in a more general research context. And I think in, you can pin this down to many different reasons. Um, there's a four items here. It's definitely not a complete list. Um, but maybe the, the first two, the lack of awareness and the lack of guidance is something that is easy to act upon. There's also a lack of incentives and a lack of confidence. These are like much harder problems to tackle. We should try and tackle them, but maybe that's not the, 
something that we can directly act on as RSEs or, or researchers. And so the lack of awareness, well, I guess we are tackling this now uh, at, the, at the workshop. And then the lack of guidance, that's really what we uh, try to address with the code review community as one group, as one part of the code review community. And so that's us. Um, and most of us are facilitating the workshop today. Um, we were one group, group two, uh, within the code review community. And we, we set out 18 months ago trying to um, um, come up with and, and write some guidelines for code review for researchers. Um, because most of the guidelines, the guidelines that you can find are targeted at open source communities or software industry, not really a research context. Um, and within this scope, we specifically, quite early on, we made the choice of trying to target uh, what we qualify as lone coders, which are researchers who would typically not consider themselves as programmers. Uh, maybe they are relatively isolated in a department in terms of programming. They're the only one who are interested in programming. Maybe their subject is computational and that they're sitting in a lab where no, not a lot of people actually um, write, write software. Um, and in this case, it's very hard to get started with code review because you know, it's hard to find people, it's hard to find interest, and it's hard to motivate the people around you to actually start spending time looking at each other's code. So this is really the people that we had in mind when we started to, to try and think about what guidelines could we, could we write for, for these people. And so the model that, that the actual outcome that we, that we targeted is, is actually a website, or at least a web resource, because we want it to be a living document that people can actually contribute to. And so we came out with this, this website that you will have an opportunity just in a, in a minute to actually go in and have a look for yourself. Um, but the idea is really to have these guidelines as something that's out there on the web and that people can actually contribute to because it's all in the open and, and it's generated through a GitHub repository that you can, um, you can open the pull request and if you want to change something, if you want to contribute something, if you want to dis discuss something, you can raise an issue or contribute to issues, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all right there and it's meant for people to, to contribute to and to participate in. So this mini workshop, um, it's basically five steps. Um, I'm just going to run through quite quick, run you quickly through the, the guidelines and the principles that, that are underpinning really the, the guidelines that we came up with. And I'll just give you a quick tour of the website, um, like uh, 30 seconds. Um, and then the, the main bit of the workshop is actually, we're going to send you in, into breakout rooms and um, probably five different breakout rooms. And then we're going to ask you to have a look at the specific part of the website. And we're gonna give you roughly 10 minutes to have a read. And then you'll be able to actually have a chat with the people in your breakout rooms, try and think about what you think of it, whether it's something that you find reasonable, accessible, something that you would be able to do in, in your own personal research context. And then we'll have a report back and then, and then we wrap up the workshop. Okay, so when we tried to, to come up with code review guidelines, we, we first kind of agreed on a set of, a set of principles, if you wish. The first one I already mentioned, um, we quite early on, we decided that we would target um, what we call the lone coder, as, as I explained, somebody who's, who's, who's writing scripts maybe for themselves that don't really plan on, on, on their software to be reused. And that's gonna be something quite different that if maybe you're working in a research team and you, you're developing your own code base, you're all, you're, you're all collaborating on, on your code. This is a context that's, that makes code review a little bit easier but definitely if you're on your own in an environment that's not, um, where it's difficult to find a lot of interest for software or people are, don't really think about software, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely harder to actually get started with code review. The second point is that we wanted, we know that most researchers and especially early career researchers are often quite stressed and overloaded with work. So we didn't want to just add another thing on top of it. Well, we kind of add something on top of it, but at least we want to add something that's that carries a very predictable time commitment. And so we want to have code review, not like three hours meeting, but we want to have repeat, repeatable short, under one hour meeting, something that, that would fit in, in, 
hopefully in anybody's schedule. We also want it to be informal and low stakes, right? It's something that's different from academic peer review. Code review is not a, a judgment of, of your worth as a researcher. It's not a, it's not a judgment of your, of your research. Right? It's, 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 a, it's a process that you, that you engage with in order to make your code better and learn from other and, and allow others to learn from. That's, that's really important to stress that. And, if, and uh, maybe another side of the coin is that we want it to be accessible to beginner programmers. And now the actual guidelines, it's not very, it's not that complicated. It's not that complex, to be honest. We identified, identified four different steps. The first one is if you want to do code review, you have to find a reviewer. And it sounds obvious, but often it's the hardest, the hardest part. Um, the second point is before you actually start with the review, it's a good idea to, to meet with the, the reviewer or the reviewee and agree on objectives, right? If you, if you review some code, there, there are a lot of different things that you could have a look at. Um, and it's, it's good because we want it to be short. We want it to, to be um, time constrained, not to take um, too long. It's a good idea to have a clear idea of what you want to look at and what sort of outcome do you, are, do you want at the end of the review. And then, and then you perform the code review, right? And this is something that can be several steps. You can do several iterations. Maybe you look at a function and then you look at another one another day and you can iterate. But at some point, because you agreed on some sort of outcome, um, you reach the fourth, point, the fourth point at which you say, well, we are now, now done with the code review and, and both parties can, you can go back and, and plan the next code review maybe. So that's the four steps. And so, these four steps, you will find them in the website. So now maybe if another facilitator could post a link in the chat, that would be super useful. If, if people want to click that link and just have a look at the website, um, and the website is not that complex as well, there's basically a landing page with a little bit of background and motivation. At most, most of the guidelines, you will find them under that getting started um, section. And if you click on this page here, you'll arrive at, at the top level view of what we call the code review workflow with a flowchart that describes the process. And then below this flowchart, you'll have four sections, which corresponds to the four steps that I just described. Find a reviewer, meet and agree on objectives, perform code review, and, and then finish. For each of these sections, you'll find links to pages with more details. So here, this is an overview of the process. So for instance, with find a reviewer, you can have more details in the find a reviewer phase. And if you click here, you have the find a review page with the objective, to, the objective of the step, which is to find a reviewer, a description of the steps to take, a description of the overall, the overall step, um, and then a little bit more information about, and then at the end of it, you can say it's find examples of, you know, scenarios that we came up with that illustrate the, this point. And so you'll have details for this for each of the four steps. All right, so now I guess what we would like you to do is, I think in, in a moment, we're going to open, uh, I think five or six breakout rooms and you'll be automatically assigned to these breakout rooms. And, um, you will have a chance to actually go through the website um, by yourself for about 10 minutes. And then we'll have a discussion that will be driven by um, the, the collaborative notes uh, in which you'll have a few questions that we'll, um, that we'll be using in order to drive the discussion. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let David um, just kind of run through um, the breakout room sessions and also talk a little bit about um, housekeeping for for this for the interactive part. Yes, yeah, just uh, the most exciting part before we go into the breakout rooms is the housekeeping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, just a reminder that uh, everything is under the SSI privacy policy, uh, including our notes, which are also Creative Commons license CCBY. So we don't have any grand plans for them, except that they will be incredibly helpful for us to go back and integrate your feedback later. Uh, so, so yes, please, we, we um, as the leaders of the breakout rooms will be there facilitating, I should say, 
Um, and so, so we can act as scribes, um, but, but you know, please, if we miss anything, feel free, or if, or if you can tweak it to make it clearer, definitely jump in on that. Also, uh, if you haven't already, I think we have about half the people, please go up to the top of the document in the roll call um and, and ask and add your information just you know so we have a good feeling for what people's background are where they're coming from because that really helps us understand too uh and the breakout rooms are not recorded this is all so say whatever you want um of course <laughs> we 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 do have a, a code of conduct so you know be good people but but um <laughs> or i'll be mean um, but, 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 uh, but yes, the, we're not recording the breakout rooms because Doom, thankfully, does not have that uh, capability yet. Uh, so, so, yes, as, as Tivo said, we'll, we'll read through for about 10 minutes. And then um, we have some key questions that we would like you to address. We want to understand, you know, first of all, is this accessible, right? Like, and, and we mean that in every sense of the word you know not only uh is it you know understandable for for researchers that we're trying to reach that are not necessarily research software engineers that are that are doing coding as part of their research a and you know are we unintentionally you know making this harder to read or or something about our tone or anything that makes this you know underrepresented groups not feel comfortable with the way that we've presented this material is it too pedantic? Whatever. Let us know now so, so we can make it friendlier. We want that. Um, I've never been guilty of being pedantic as someone who's been in academia way too long. But um, yes, I think that covers everything. We also, if if one of you would like to volunteer to to read out at the end, uh, to, to to comment out when we all come back and do like a minute from each group, that would be great. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable, let us know and, and we can take on that role, but we would really like to, you know, get the group's voice because we already know what we think about the site, or at least we've been staring at it so long we don't know what we think about the site. Uh, so, so with that said, uh, I think we'll go ahead and go into the breakout rooms unless there's anything else that I should have mentioned. Great. I think everyone is slowly trickling back in. Um, we're now going to begin the report out session. Uh, if my team gives me a thumbs up, I can start, given that I'm reporting back for group one. Thank you. All right, so group one, we were focused on finding a reviewer. Um, so it was quite a short section, and it might que seem quite straightforward, but it's actually the most important, because if you don't find a reviewer, there is no code review. Um, so we had some really great feedback from the team. Um, looking at how to make this more accessible. And I think for me, the real take home was that as much as we thought we hadn't embedded any sort of background knowledge or technical know-how, and there was lots of instances where we can improve the text just through simple wording changes um, and to make sure that we're not leaving anyone behind, um, particularly people who might not be as au fait um, with code review or with coding in general as the group that, that invented the text. I think one thing I wanted to point out is we also <laughs> moved on to discuss other parts of, of the, the code review website, including the flowchart. And there was a really interesting point about how our flowchart potentially differs from that of JAWS um, in that we don't have, we have sort of a set code review block, whereas JAWS really calls out that iter iterative process of needing again and again, just something for groups, was it? three, four, five to consider. Um, so throwing that ball over to you. But yeah, anything my group would like to add before I, I hand over to group two? Brilliant, group two. Oh, we can't really hear you, Matthew, same, same problem. <laughs> Every time. Okay, Good. Yeah. there we go. Um, yes, I was, I was just saying we didn't really uh, get a chance to nominate a reporter. So I, I don't know if anyone from group two is, is happy to do that right now. Otherwise, I will. Okay, I, I, I will go ahead then and, and just quickly sort of summarize what we were talking about. 
Um, so our, ours was the the meet and agree and objectives um, group. So so this this section was basically recommending uh, that the reviewer and and the author sort of in in some fashion get together before the actual review happens uh, and agree loosely on on what the objective for the review will be. So talking about things like uh, code readability, maintainability. One term that came up in our discussion was was extensibility uh, and and whether that that term might need to be made a bit more concise or, or specific uh, and well defined for why that is a good thing that someone would, would want to do. Um, in in terms of uh, accessibility, um, it, it was felt that this was, you know, our, what was written in this section was was actually sort of loose enough that it could be applicable to to many different scenarios uh, and and didn't really exclude anyone. Um, we we had a nice conversation around whether code review as an objective can have code correctness as as an objective for for the review. Um, and that there are kind of different ways you can check for correctness, which is which is quite an interesting discussion, which I, I won't have time to summarize. Um, feeling there was also, in terms of actually having a meeting before the code review, it was felt that perhaps async could be really a good way to do this instead of doing it in person um, and could actually add value. Um, Right, and I, I think I'll just cut it off there so that other groups have a have a chance to to summarize as well. So we're group three, and I think Sadie was going to report out for us. I can't uh, hear. Yeah, we can hear you as well. Can you hear me now? Yep. Oh, you can. Sorry. Okay. That's just something on my laptop. Sorry. Um, so yes, just reporting back for group three. Um, so we were on the section of perform code review, code author communicates code and context. Um, so the feedback we uh, discussed was generally positive. Um, so we thought the section was accessible, but I think we generally, generally agreed it was a little bit dense and could perhaps have been um, broken up or summarized with uh, diagrams or images, ideally. Um, uh, we also thought in general, there were some key points that would be good to emphasize because um, nothing particularly stood out. So some highlighting would be good. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so, so I think we conveyed that in general, we would be happy to uh, implement these guidelines in practice, although it might they might be it might make the process of code review slightly more time consuming. Um, the fact you have to talk about the context and um, pick out a specific um, block of code to discuss that would add to the process that um, so some managers might need convincing that's worthwhile. Um, I think the most interesting part of the discussion was um, so there's a question on. Um, what we think about the size of the code segment recommended um, to review, to pick out, to review, because um, the recommendation was 50, 200 lines of code. Um, so we discussed whether we thought that was too little or too much. And generally we were thinking it's actually a bit too restrictive of a rule um, because for various reasons, the right amount of code, um, uh, well, it'll depend on various things. So for example, um, if you're reviewing like an API, more lines might be required. Um, if you want to do more in-depth um, review, obviously few, few lines, and also the the density of what what constitutes a line, you know, depends on the language. So there's there's so many different variables. And we were thinking uh, it might be better to even use a different um, um, I can't make the word uh, metric. So for example, just to time box it, just to say some amount of code that you can review in a certain amount of time. Um, yeah, I think I probably spoke too long. So um, yeah, thanks. And no, no worries. I'll just uh, go on with the with the group four. Um, same thing. Um, so we were looking at the second part uh, of the perform code review, which is the actual review itself, where the reviewer reviews code maybe on their own, and then, then and then there's a code review meeting itself. Uh, overall, it was it was a bit, it's it's a bit too wordy probably. Um, there's only there's a lot of text, but only three paragraphs. It would probably help to to give it more, more space. 
It also might make it, you know, if you want to use this as a reference, it's going to be hard to go back and then find the exact information that you're looking for. Um, so yeah, that's in terms of the form that that was the main, I think, uh, uh, criticism. Um, there was also a good one about the words that we're using. We're using words like, um, um, one example was idiomatic or condition, conditionals. And that's something that's not necessarily known by absolute beginners. And so I don't remember who, but uh, we had the suggestion of having maybe hover overs, um, like, you know, or a glossary that would help uh, beginners to, to or, or use different words. But, um, people generally like that in the first part, there was like, we used, when you review, you can start with the basics, like style and, and, and viable names. And then you build at some point after a while, you maybe can look at the overall design and modularity, but Jerry, you don't really have to start from this. Um, one, uh, I think one person I find a really good suggestion is that it would help to have worked examples of a review. So you give like a, a snippet of code and you see this is the kind of feedback that you could give. And also some recordings of code review, a little bit in the style that the software carpentry is when you, if you take the software carpentry instructor training, they, they show you like a good training and then a bad training. We could have like a video of a good code review with good feedback and then a bad code review with like awful feedback. Not too awful, but um, yeah. And then maybe a last thing we discussed is that it's we have a checklist for reviewers, but we don't have a checklist for authors. And often uh, people in the breakout rooms, um, I think it was Sam mentioned that if, we, if you start a code review, some, sometimes people just come in and expect that you would fix their code or, or find a bug. And that's, that's not the point of, of that code review as we mean it. So maybe that's not that clear. And um, it would be interesting to have a section on, you know, uh, give author the, the, an idea of what they can expect. And maybe that ties in with the like meet and agree and objective part. Um, and lastly, a point about, again, it's maybe sometimes hard to find 50, 100 or 200 lines of code, especially if your code isn't really modular and you have very long functions. So yeah, it can be hard to break the, the, the code. And yeah, that's it for group four. Uh, if I forgot anything, please feel free to unmute group four. Otherwise, I think we're done. And I am volunteering myself to report out for group five. I'm not sure if we're going to just get booted out of <laughs> Zoom now that we're over time. So, so in case we don't say it, I see we're losing people. But um, Holly did put a link in the chat to the site. So you can definitely go to the GitHub repository and uh you know raise an issue to to give us more feedback that way we're, we're still figuring out future plans which may include contributing to the turing way some some form of this um but this is all hugely valuable feedback so thank you everybody um just really briefly in our section we we did talk about like overall it was good accessible um maybe a section at the beginning that was sort of dug into too many details could be moved um also sort of talking more broadly about setting the tone, which we do in other places, but like linking that to cultural differences, you, you really want to like make sure everybody understands how they're gonna interact and what kind of feedback they want and what form they want it. And then last but not least, one uh, idea that came up is that there's already a lot of sort of code review the other way that goes on, like the SSI is doing reports on people's code that they submit. Could Are there ways in organizations now where you could just sort of add this on, like, I wrote this review on what you gave me. Why don't we just talk for 30 minutes since it's fresh in my brain anyways? So just like, how do people integrate this into their lives now that they know that they can do it? And any other ideas along that line, we'd definitely love to hear about. So including uh, starting up the international worldwide uh, pan-universe uh, code review discord with uh, parrot emojis and the, and the cat emojis, the animated cat emojis. Uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> we're definitely over time. So, so thank you everybody for, for all of the feedback. This is really helpful and great talking with everybody. Thank you so much. No.